So does the Cyclops get a bad rap? That's what we're going to look at in this Battletech vlog, pushing forth the Tactica, figuring out, building that checklist, where does it fit in your lance? Now, from the narrative perspective, I think this is an amazing mech and has a lot of opportunities to be in your lance. It's a command mech. It's got some very powerful sensors, a couple of design quirks that you can utilize on there. I think the head shroud looks really, really cool. And I imagine that internally, uh, the pilot controls in the cockpit, the, the thing must be totally blinged out. There's probably a lot of room in there. But putting that aside, that, that's really kind of inner sphere early on. Um, as time advances and mechs become stripped down and the tech is taken out, really from the narrative perspective, when you remove that command and control module and, and the computer and everything, you're left with an assault mech. Okay, an assault mech is good. Tonnage, 90 tons. And ultimately, I think that's what's going to save this mech tactically. But where's the array of weapons? Um, look at a stalker. It doesn't have stalker weapons on there. And it feels very underpowered, underwhelmed as an assault mech. In, in many ways, I kind of feel like it's a medium mech on there. So let's, let's kind of run through the numbers. Speed is okay. Armor is the challenge. It, it feels vastly under-armored and under-gunned with it. Uh, examples. Where's the redundancy? One of the things we look at with a heavy, and especially an assault mech, is multiples of the same weapon. Uh, again, the Stalker's a great example. Multiple large lasers, multiple medium lasers, multiple missile packs. So this way, when you do zero in on a target you at least have a couple of chances to, to hit. And if I can pull down those modifiers by um, getting you out in the open, maybe walking or not moving at all, that redundancy is going to get really nasty really fast on there. The Cyclops doesn't have that. And I, I should say redundancy outside of specialized mechs. Uh, something like the Longbow, one of my favorite mechs, it's not really fair to say that has a lot of redundancy compared to other mechs. That, that's a specialized mech. Everything is geared towards long range. But, but look at some of the other mechs that are out there. An example like the Awesome. It's got redundancy across the board with the PPCs on there. Somewhere in there, there's a small laser too. So on the way in, on the way in with the Cyclops, we've got a long range missile pack. So we can put out a little bit of dice we could do indirect, but here's the thing where I kind of scratch my head. It's only one pack. We don't have redundancy, and it's not a 20-pack. At 90 tons, I'm looking to rock a 20, maybe a 15 if there's some other reason for it, uh, like the T-Bolt. Okay, different weight class. It's got the 15 because, well, the armor, the sheer armor and the other weapons that it has. It feels like that should be a 15 or a 20 on there, but we've got something. As we close, um, now we get into the medium laser range. Yes, at long range for medium lasers we can shoot. They want to operate at short to medium range. But we've only got two. I mean, shouldn't there be like four on there? But that's at least the redundancy. You've got the two medium lasers. Now you close to point blank. All right, auto cannon 20. And, and I have to say, I have, I have um, a Cyclops. I actually have two Cyclopses, two Cyclopi in um, my Lances, my, my Dog of Wars Mercenary Company and uh, Grey Death Legion. I've got a Cyclops in each, and I, I regularly play this mech. I, I enjoy it, and that's what's pushed to this Tactica. But now we close to short range, Auto Cannon 20, one of the most feared weapons in the Inner Sphere. Um, even against the clans, it's going to it's going to cause the clans to take notice, but the challenge in facing the clans with an auto cannon 20 is um, not so much that uh, the armor that it's going to strip away, but the fact that the clans, ton for ton, tend to operate at a higher speed, and their weapons outrange you like crazy. That's before we even get into crazy stuff like targeting computers. So to be able to waltz up there to point blank range and fire off your auto cannon 20, I won't say impossible, but a lot harder to do. And then we've got the short-range missile pack on there. So optimally, um, this is a mech that I'm going to want to close with. Because if I just hang back at long range, all I have is a single 10-pack 
for the battle value buy-in LRM10, I can put a Valkyrie down on the table and uh, affect the same command and control from range. All right, we get closer. As soon as I'm in range, now I've got the medium lasers and I've got the 10 pack. Well, there's a lot of other medium mechs that can put out that bite. There's a lot of heavy mechs that can put out more of a bite. So now we want to close even more. And this is, this is where the Cyclops wants to operate. It wants to operate at close point blank range. I would consider the Cyclops a brawler mech simply because you want to be point blank with that auto cannon 20. If I'm that point blank, meaning one hex away, I'm 90 tons. I might as well start punching you. I might as well do the punch, punch, location of the AC-20, fire off that AC-20, and, and go from there. It's a very close-in, assault, brawling mech. Um, I, ironically, the Banshee gets a rap as a brawler. The Cyclops is up there as a brawler over, and, and tactically, that's the way to do it. In my opinion, that's the way I play it. What this means, though, it's an aggressive mech. There's really, for the battle value buy-in, uh, there's only really one way to play it. So I throw down a Cyclops, and it's not some command and control narrative computer in there. It's it's just the stock, let's roll some dice and blow stuff up. You kind of know what I'm going to be doing with it. 